Good evening and welcome to the 2018 Spring Soiree and report to the community. I wish to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is Treaty 6 territory and a traditional meeting ground for many Indigenous peoples. The territory on which Augustana campus of the University of Alberta is located provided a traveling route and home to the Cree, Blackfoot and Métis as it did for the Nakoda, Tsutsina, Chippewan and other Indigenous peoples. Their spiritual and practical relationships to the land create a rich heritage for our learning and life as a community. Welcome everyone again. It's an honor to be here with you this evening. My name is Melissa Wilk, and I'm a third year Global and Development Studies student here at Augustana. I was born and raised in Edmonton, Alberta. Now, many of you must be wondering, how did you end up at Augustana when you could go to North Campus? Well, I would say that's a great question. I came here mainly because I wanted to escape my parents, as most millennials do at the age of 18. So I planned to spend my first year at Augustana and then transfer back to main campus. I started writing for the Dagla Tale student newspaper in my first couple of weeks at Augustana, and my first story was about the grand reopening of Augustana's Founders Hall. Um, in those few moments, I interviewed Dean Allenberger for the first time, and he told me to write in my, in my story, the old building looked like a rabbit warren. <laughs> now, those words resonated with me because I thought they were so hilarious, um, and so did the entire event. I fell in love with the history of Augustana, and many alumni students shared their stories with me. It wasn't long before I knew I was here to stay. I also began volunteering as a campus ambassador, working as a library assistant, as well as a climbing wall employee. I've been involved with the Spirit of the Land program and the conference, along with many other CSL placements. In my second year, along with some of my fellow students, I co-founded and was the managing editor for the Augustana Medium Campus Magazine. And in my winter semester, I went to Santiago de Cuba on the study abroad program. Throughout my time at Augustana thus far, I've really appreciated all of the courses I've taken and the amazing faculty we are blessed with here. And in the midst of all-nighters, excessive caffeine consumption, and all things student life, I'm really proud to be here at Augustana. This year, we're celebrating transformation, and like the new Augustana calendar, there's been some pretty amazing changes here. We're innovative, and I believe that we have something very special coming in the future and for the next few years at Augustana. I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to be here this evening. I hope that you enjoy the evening and before I invite Dean Allen to the stage, I would like to welcome His Worship Norm Mayor, the Mayor of the City of Camrose, along with esteemed Camrose City Councilors and elders from our neighbor neighboring nations. Please allow me um, please join me in acknowledging senior leadership representatives from the University of Alberta, the Non-Academic Staff Association, Red Deer College, Musquachese Cultural College, and the Camrose Lutheran College Corporation. <laughs> Thank you all for being here. Now, to give his report to the community, I'd like to welcome Dean Allenberger to the stage. Thanks, Melissa, for your opening remarks and for your contributions as a leader here at Augustana. Thanks to Melissa, I get to brag that uh, it's not only Camrose that supports two newspapers, it's also Augustana that supports two newspapers, the Daglatal and the Medium, uh, which is amazing for a campus our size. Uh, Melissa's been a wonderful leader and a, and a very successful journalist on our campus. In fact, uh, she and I are working on sending her to Mexico to work with my son, who's a journalist for Agence France Presse, for a January term course next year. Thanks also to all of you who are uh, joining us this evening. It's a special pleasure to welcome you again to the Jean and Peter Lougheed Performing Arts Center for this year's report to the community. I want to extend a special thanks to Nick Beach, our theater manager, for hosting us and for being such a wonderful partner to both Augustana and the city of Camrose. Seven years ago, as we began work on this project, 
many community members asked a reasonable question. Was our optimism for this project well-founded? Truth be told, we had marshaled all the facts, but we were still taking a leap of faith. Nick, along with his talented staff, a dedicated management council, and a passel of community volunteers are the reason the Lougheed Center has be performed beyond our wildest expectations and been a transformative force here in Camrose. Would you please join me in thanking Nick? For my report tonight, I'd like to continue a pattern uh, that I started two years ago. Before that, I had focused my report to the community, uh, to the report to the community on campus and faculty accomplishments from the year that was ending. This year, once again, in both my oral presentation and in the written report to the community, which uh, you can pick up after, uh, after, this evening's, uh, after this evening's program, I've chosen to focus both backwards and forwards. This approach is consistent with my own annual report to the university's provost, Steve Dew. Steve asks each year, what have you and more broadly Augustana accomplished over the past 12 months? And what are your goals for the coming year? That rolling approach to accountability makes sense organizationally, but I believe it also makes sense in our relationship with all of you, our key stakeholders. Before launching into my report, which will include a number of faculty, staff, and student voices, I want to recognize how bittersweet the end of a school year is. Eleven days ago, Augustana thanked and bid farewell to five retirees, Michelle Pratt from Human Resources, Norma Williams from Social Sciences, Shirley Lowen from the Dean's Office, music professor Milton Schlosser, and history professor Ronnie Paolo. Since then, I've learned that Roger Galenza, our all-conference curling coach, will also be retiring. All of these individuals have left a mark on this campus, whether in the form of friendly and expert service to colleagues, students, and the public, inspired classroom teaching, mentorship and leadership, or inspirational artistic performance. So would you please join me in a round of applause for these amazing folks. Of course, as some careers come to an end, others are just beginning. 2017-18 was an exciting year in part because of the energy and excitement that seven brand new faculty brought to Augustana in fields as diverse as environmental science, management, cultural studies, religious studies, English, and computing science. All seven of these faculty members are profiled in this year's written report. And in addition, there's one new staff member I'd like to introduce you to tonight. Um, so I don't know if it's possible to pull up the house lights just a bit. She's Debbie McIntosh. Debbie, who arrived on February 1st, is Augustana's new assistant dean advancement. She came to us from Dalhousie University, and in addition to her experience in fundraising, she's a liberal arts kind of gal with a degree in history from St. Francis Xavier University. Debbie has already been making friends across cameras, but in 10 weeks, I doubt that she has yet met all of you. So I hope you'll consider introducing yourselves to her during the soiree this evening uh, Debbie, would you please stand so folks know who you are? There's Debbie. Okay, we're good with the house lights. Thank you. This past year also saw uh, uh, two major improvements to our facilities here at Augustana. 
The first was the Alver and Arlene Person Pedway that connects Founders Hall with the Forum and the Library. Um, the second was the completion, the complete renovation of three science labs and related support spaces in the science extension. I reported on both of these projects to you a year ago. Andrew Sharman, the Vice President, Facilities and Operations of the University is here tonight. And Andrew, a special thanks to you and your staff for helping us envision and for steering the science lab improvements. We couldn't have started the new school year had these labs not been delivered on time, but even more importantly, they've already begun to transform the teaching of chemistry and biology here at Augustana. 2017-18 also saw the completion of the new learning commons on the second floor of the library, a beautiful space with perhaps the best views of our campus. Randall Nickel, our executive director, Student Life, will tell you a bit about this space shortly, but here's the vision in a nutshell. Augustana has brought together all our student services in a central location that includes comfortable spaces for formal and informal meetings, studying, workshops, and academic support programming. And we've connected this learning commons via the Pedway to our Center for Academic Advising and Career Planning, LAB, which is located on the second floor of Founders Hall. It's not quite one-stop shopping, but with a friendly staff on both ends, referrals are easy and quick. As many of you know, uh, because you participated in the community consultations, Augustana also completed this year a new version of our long-range development plan. The LRDP, as we call it, because we all use acronyms in the University of Alberta, is where land use planning, high-level facilities planning, and enrollment planning all intersect. Final approval of the LRDP will be coming at the upcoming Board of Governors meeting next month. With that in place, it will be time to begin serious conversations about logical next stage projects. My own focus is in two areas and it's on two questions. With regard to residence halls, my question is, does it make more sense for Augustana to be prioritizing the diversification of our student housing by focusing on options for senior students on our land bank between 48 and 47 streets, or to prioritize the replacement of aging first year student housing with the development of a new residence hall on the far side of the campus ravine. We've got to figure out which is our highest priority and that's something we need to get done in the next year so we can begin the planning for the next project. The second area I'm thinking about is academic facility improvements. There my question is, with the hope that the federal government will continue its strategic investment funding, which was the main source of money for last year's lab renovations, what should our phase two project be for the science and classroom buildings? To answer these questions is going to require extensive consultation and should we be looking to the land bank east of the soccer field for a next stage project, the consultation will certainly need to include the Augustana Neighborhood Association, the Camrose City Council, and others of you from the community who may be interested in the design details. Finally, in the area of facilities, I would like to share with you that we're not finished dreaming about what might be possible at Augustana's Miquelon Lake Research Station which we developed through a partnership with Alberta Parks. The next stage that we're envisioning 
and hoping to raise money for is an astronomical observatory that takes advantage of the fact that the park is part of a dark sky preserve. Our vision with an observatory is that we will serve not only our own students and faculty, but the larger community as well, with programs for school-age youth, families, and visitors to the park. A special thanks to Peter Berg, chair of our science department, and Gerhard Lotz, associate professor of physics, for the creativity and leadership that they're bringing to this project. In many ways, of course, every year at Augustana is a year of special accomplishments. Recognizing the risk of numerous omissions, I would like to highlight for all of you just eight, eight accomplishments from 2017-18. First, during the past year, Augustana faculty members published three books and a, min and a minimum of 33 peer-reviewed articles in prestigious academic journals. Collectively, they have received research funding from the Social Science and Humanities Research Council, the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, Beaver County, Covenant Health, and Alberta Parks, far surpassing our previous records for funded grants in a single year. So congratulations to our amazing faculty. Second, in August, Augustana hosted the highly successful International Kodai Symposium, which was supported by a Shirk Partnership Grant and a Worth Institute Grant. Dr. Ardell Rees provided the needed international contacts, the inspirational leadership, and the vision to make this dream come true. As for the conference attendees, um, music teachers and musicians who came to Camrose from literally all over the world, they reported this was one of their largest and best conferences ever. Third, in October, a delegation from Augustana traveled to Musquachee's Cultural College to meet with their president, Claudine Lewis, who is here tonight, plus other administrators and faculty. Based on that foundation, we are in the early stages of new collaborations in English, social work, management, and environmental science. In addition, we're continuing to build a strong relationship between our libraries along with transfer pathways for MCC students once they've completed their studies in Musquachees. In the coming year, along with Claudine, I hope to strengthen these connections so they become part of the routine ways of doing business at both Augustana and at Musquachee's Cultural College. Fourth, a year ago, I told all of you about Augustana's new Pathways program, which was funded with a generous gift from alumnus Gordon Warnke. The goal of Pathways is to provide senior students an opportunity to apply their learning to real world challenges, issues, or problems in rural or indigenous communities. This year, we selected our first three Pathways scholars, all of whom will be undertaking projects this coming summer. Melissa Wilk, who all of you now know, will be working in Musquachees with Wynn Eco Services on a project involving the planning and building of a permaculture garden and food forest at Ermanskin School. Haley Smith will be working with the Recreation Department in Vulcan, Alberta on assessments of their youth programming and the development of new community programs for both seniors and children ages five and under. And finally, Madison Pearson 
will be working with Parkland County on the assessment and development of rural broadband pro programming. These amazing projects are just a small sample of what's going to be possible in the future as we hope to grow Pathways and have committed to retaining it as a priority for future fundraising efforts. So you can all climb on board. Um, number five. Continuing with the theme of community outreach, Augustana not only hosted Reading University for the ninth year and the children's Easter extravaganza for the seventh year, we also continued uh, our collaboration with the Jean and Peter Lougheed Performing Arts Center, the Battle River School Division, and Our Lady of Mount Pleasant Catholic School to mount the very successful grade seven science fair which brought approximately 200 junior high school students to campus for an entire day. Sixth, lest you think our community focus is on young people, I want to mention Augustana's exciting professional education programs for rural and municipal leaders. With coordination from Kate McConnell and Keelane Brand, Augustana faculty members over the last three years have been able to serve over 260 elected officials, municipal administrators, NGO staff, economic development officers, rural planners, and community leaders from 63 different Alberta communities. In addition to our certificate in rural sustainability, this past year, we launched a new advanced municipal leadership certificate with programming delivered by former MLA and best-selling author Doug Griffith. Seven, in March of this year, the Chester Ronning Center for the Study of Religion and Public Life, with support from the Cool Institute for Advanced Study, sponsored a unique sold out event here at the Lougheed Center, a live video streamed presentation and conversation with former CIA employee, US government contractor and prominent dissident, Edward Snowden. Snowden is known worldwide for his efforts to call attention to issues related to government surveillance, privacy, democracy, and public life. During the Q&A session that followed his address, he also stated, quote, the problem is that we have developed a world where we're strictly evaluating everything on economic terms. This is a moment, he said, where the liberal arts have never mattered more. We need people, he said, to be able to look critically at the claims passed by every sector and evaluate them critically. We need to teach people, not just facts, but how to think. Music, of course, to my ears. As I left the Lougheed Center that night, many community members approached me to say how remarkable it was that Augustana could be hosting such an important high profile event out here on the Canadian Prairie, right here in cameras. It was a fabulous night and I'm pleased to give all the credit to Assistant Professor of Religion Joe Weeb and Chester Ronning Center Director Ian Wilson. Eighth and finally, Augustana completed our second year delivering a co-curricular certificate program in building a capacity for reconciliation. Coordinated by Megan Caldwell, our indigenous student advisor, this program is an important part of Augustana's commitment to take seriously the action steps recommended by Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission. This year, we welcomed members of the larger community to join our students, faculty, and staff in the six workshops 
that make up the certificate program. In addition, we invited the entire Camrose community to join us for a rousing and successful round dance, a collaboration that required guidance and assistance from many elders and participation by many musicians and community members from Musquachies. All told, over the course of the evening, which stretched well into the night, over 1,000 people participated from families with young children to Augustana students to seniors. In choosing these eight examples from 2017-18, I've of course had to be very selective. There are many other amazing and impressive accomplishments listed in the report to the community, which I hope you'll take the time to read. Now, on to this evening's main theme, where we're headed as we think strategically about students' academic experience here at Augustana. As I reported last year, I'm particularly proud that the University of Alberta's strategic plan for the public good calls for Augustana to be not only a leading undergraduate liberal arts college, but an engine of teaching and learning innovation, thereby benefiting the entire University of Alberta. Most of you no doubt remember that both last year and the year before at this event, I shared our plans for a new academic calendar and a new first year seminar program. Both were launched in 2017-18. The calendar, you will recall, makes room for three-week blocks in September, January, and eventually in May, periods where students take just one course, ideally an immersion into an exciting learning experience that would not be possible in more traditional terms when they and their teachers are balancing multiple classes. For all first-year students, the immersion begins with a first-year seminar, a high-impact practice that we know from research across North America improves both student academic performance and graduation rates. Our faculty and staff are now in the, in the midst of assessing how well the new calendar and the first-year seminar worked. The feedback is mostly positive, but we're also identifying areas where there's definitely some need for improvement. Tonight, I've invited two of our faculty members, along with a student or two from their classes, to share with you some of their experiences. The first is Assistant Professor of Religious Studies, Joe Weeb, who I just a few minutes ago thanked for his leadership on the Edward Snowden event, Joe taught a first year seminar in September entitled, now you'll have to get, listen carefully to this, you probably would have enjoyed being in this class, a first year seminar entitled Sex, Love, and the Human Soul. Joe will be joined by two students, Madison Koberstein, who is studying biology here at Augustana, and Cody Hynek, who is studying business economics. Directly following Joe uh, will be Professor of History and Social Science Department Chair Jeff Dipple. Jeff taught a very popular winter term block course on the subject of genocide. Jeff will be joined by Isabel Stamm, a biology major who's completing her second year of study at Augustana. So we'll start with Joe. Thanks, Alan. When I first arrived here, I was told about the new 311 calendar and that I should start thinking about three-week courses. I started asking myself, what can I do in a three-week course that I couldn't do otherwise in a traditional semester? 
Would there be different learning objectives, different assignments, different activities? As a new instructor, I found these questions energizing. So when the opportunity came up to teach an FYS, a class meant to be an introduction to university as a whole, I took it. Here was my opportunity as a new instructor to design a class based entirely on non-program specific learning outcomes. What do all students need to know? How should students prepare for their Augustana experience as a whole? The trick was finding a topic that could both engage students and achieve these outcomes. I had TA'd a course as a grad student on love that was popular, so I decided to go with that. But how could I make it engaging enough for three hours a day? How could a course on love impact students? How could it be practical? To answer these questions, I began by looking at other FYS classes for some inspiration. There's a class on memoirs, where students come to class to learn how to make memoirs. There's a class on comedy, where students come to class to learn how to make jokes. There's a class on food, where students come to class to learn how to make food. So a class on love, students could come to class to learn how to make... <laughs> Back to the drawing board. Don't begin again, okay. Uh, I wanted to come up with something that would allow me to keep my job and avoid a national scandal. So what I came up with was this. My class would be one where students come to learn how to involve themselves in their work, how to be honest about what they need to know, about what they want to know, how to find their voices in their studies. What I think all students need to know, what I think best prepares them for university, no matter what their major is, is that the key to success does not come from finding the right answer. You don't need to come to university to find answers. You can find any answer you want on Wikipedia. One of my favorite quotes comes from Ursula Le Guin's novel, The Left Hand of Darkness, in which a character proclaims the perfect uselessness of knowing the answer to the wrong question. The key to success is learning to ask the right questions. And the key to learning how to ask questions is to make your work personal. The first step of knowledge is asking yourself, what do you love? Why does this subject matter to you? Why do, what do you want to find out more about? How are you going to involve yourself, your passions, commitments, interests in your studies? If you can connect what you're studying to who you are as a person, then the practicality and usefulness of university education becomes clear to you. That's what my course on love tried to do. Make work personal so you can ask good questions. So we read Shakespeare and Plato, not to establish once and for all the final answer to what these classic texts mean, but to explore what questions they're asking. Exploring questions is harder and takes more time than finding answers. And here's the beauty of three-week courses in general and the FYS in particular. We're given time. No distractions with other courses. No 50-minute classes where you barely have time to clear your throat. Three-week courses only seem short or compressed if you're preoccupied with fitting in content, giving lectures, finishing exams, finding and memorizing answers to all the wrong questions. But if the goal instead is to find your voice in your research and analysis, then the anxiety to cover everything melts away. This has been the biggest contribution the FYS has had on my teaching. Instead of planning my courses around the anxiety to get through as much material as possible, I'm now more concerned with incorporating students' curiosity. I don't want research papers to be like detective work trying to find out who done it, but rather to be a way of self-exploration, a way to give depth to students' interests and passions. Having the time to be curious, to explore, to be honest, to involve oneself in one's studies is a gift. It's impacted me both as a teacher and a researcher, but I'm most interested to hear how it has impacted my students. Hi, I'm Cody. Now, uh, coming out of high school, the mere thought of university was scary, unpredictable, and daunting. While I'd always strived to achieve good grades in high school, 
a bothersome factor of going to university is that my knowledge of the lifestyle was completely limited to a few teachers at my school and film and television. I was the first one in my family to go to post-secondary, and while I'm accustomed to the work now, roughly a year ago, I was terribly nervous in anticipation for it. My first year seminar really helped bridge that gap and soften the learning curve that comes along with it. It was invaluable for integrating me into being able to write, perform, and function at a university level. Something I really enjoyed was the openness for discussion that we had and the very communal environment that the class created. Not only did it equip me with the proper skills and ability, but it instilled confidence in myself I needed to be able to fully function at the academic level. One of the most notable experiences in the class that I had was the revisiting of Romeo and Juliet. While most of us did this play as part of our high school syllabus, I found it very helpful to be able to reread and interpret the text while also being able to see the difference in work from reading and discussing it in high school to the university level. Uh, being able to interpret the different themes and motifs that extend beyond the comprehension-based work I had done prior and the more deep and philosophical school of thought which I've come to value highly. All in all, the first year seminar was a powerful first class to have taken and laid the gr helpful groundwork for my classes that followed it. Hello, I'm Maddie. And although a course about sex and love is different than other courses I would usually be taking for my science degree, I do strongly believe this course was an extremely valuable start to my university experience. I was initially nervous about the small classes that Augustana had to offer due to the conversation and participation that would be expected of the students. However, I began to appreciate them early on. By the end of this three-week course, I was coming to class ready and excited to contribute my ideas. The atmosphere of the classroom was very impressive, and it may have been due to the luck of the classmates or the professor. However, I strongly believe that the success of this class was due to the students being completely in charge of our own thoughts. I really appreciated the freedom we had to think, and this was what created the great conversation in the class. It was not led by, com by questions from the professor. Instead, the students led the conversation, and it flowed so nicely to new ideas and unexpected topics. This course was not only successful due to the great conversation. There was core knowledge and skills taught that would be applied to the rest of my year. The first year seminar al allowed me to build a foundation of confidence and knowledge that was perhaps not known before coming to Augustana. And by this, I mean making citations, making diligent use of the library, navigating e-class, and refreshing writing skills. These things might have been overlooked otherwise. In, uh, instead of expecting that the newcoming students had had these skills previously, we were treated as if we were new students in a new place with a system that was new to us. It was one of the greatest warm welcomes I could have asked for. Thanks very much, Maddie, Cody, and Joe. And, uh, and now on to uh, Jeff and Isabel. As Dean Berger has indicated, during the January three-week block, Isabel and I were part of a first-year course on the history of genocide in the modern world. The impetus behind this course was to make students aware of cases of genocide or potential genocide in the modern world and to provide them the historical context for understanding these events. In other words, the idea was to make them better informed global citizens. In my opinion, the three-week term was particularly well suited to this course. I wanted students to engage with course material on an emotional level and the intensity of the January term helped significantly with that. In addition, it provided some more basic and pragmatic advantages. For example, I've found that when studying recent cases of genocide, documentaries can be particularly helpful in engaging students. The three-hour time slot provided by the January block allowed me to show documentaries and then also to work through exercises to help students process the information they received. There were other possibilities as well. This year, on the second Wednesday of the course, so at almost exactly the middle point of the course, 
I had students read excerpts from Daniel Goldhagen's Hitler's Willing Executioners, a controversial book that argues that ordinary Germans were complicit in the crimes of the Nazis. For the purpose of class assignments, I had divided students into 10 groups of five each. On that Wednesday, when students arrived, I randomly chose two groups and gave them purple triangles made of paper. I then gave two more groups gold stars made of paper. The stars were told they had 14 hours to find the people with triangles and to take their triangles from them. The triangles were told to do whatever was necessary to hide from the stars and to keep their triangles. The remainder of the students, the other 60% of the class, could be collaborators with the stars or defenders of the triangles. In that short period of time, 14 hours, the class passed through eight of the 10 identified stages of genocide that have been established by the NGO Genocide Watch. This was the closest I could or wanted to get to experiential learning in a class like this. I want to emphasize that this was possible only in the context of the three-week block. In a normal semester, I could never tell students to hide from their classmates for 14 hours. <laughs> well, I could, but it wouldn't be a good idea. The final project for this course was a poster presentation each of the groups did. Some of those posters are now on display in the lobby. Isabel and I welcome the chance to tell you about them. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Isabel Stam and as has already been said, I'm a second year student. I just finished my last exam today, so I'm very happy. <laughs> So I'm off to my summer holidays, or as I like to call it, work. Um, and it was really an interesting experience taking this course. So me coming as a biology major, I'm a science focused. I've already done a year of school, and I knew, you know, I knew how to read the books. I knew kind of what was going on that way. But being more of a science student, I feel like you were kind of focused on history. What's already been done, what everyone already knows, you have to learn it now, too. And it felt kind of reserved that way. Like I didn't get to go out and experience the world and ask those kind of questions when I needed to know about bioperturbation for my midterm. So this course was that opportunity for me. When I saw it, I was like, yes, this sounds really interesting. I want to go for it. I want to see what I can learn from this because you know, I'm, I'm not going to have this chance in a lot of other times, so I might as well go for it. So I learned a lot through this course. I definitely, it started with a lot of a groundwork, like what actually is genocide? And you know, I always thought it was very cut and dry. This is what it is and this is what it isn't. But I got to learn it's, it's not always like that because you're dealing with people and how people uh, perceive situations and how they think about things. And it's, it's not always you know, how I would see it. Someone else could see it differently. So looking at things that way, really establish things and I, I could understand it a little bit better. One thing that was nice, you know, with a three week course, you really get worried that it's gonna be so stressful. I mean, I have to sit in a classroom with this guy at the front for three hours a day, every day, and I have to try and absorb what's being talked about. And that can be pretty daunting, but I felt like with the way things were structured in this course, I didn't feel like I was gonna have any sort of, you know, mental breakdowns or you know trips to the grocery store to get a carton of ice cream and just sit down and cry a little bit. I didn't have that and I really liked that because you know it's a good feeling when you know that you're in a good space. So what was happened within the course was everything was very nicely you know spaced. I felt like assignments you know there were a few days apart you know a few days in this three weeks is you know quite a bit um, but everything felt like I wasn't being rushed. I knew what was coming, when it was coming, and I, I appreciated that, and I really, I liked that about that, this course. One thing I really did love was the documentaries that uh, Jeff talked about, because you can talk about it all you want, and you can look at it from the outside and say, oh yes, I understand, but it's not until you really see what's going on that you can really begin to comprehend the things that happen in these sort of situations when it comes to genocide. And documentaries do that for you in a way that, you know, learning out of a book just can't. And I appreciated those three hours to just sit, watch, and absorb everything. And with this course, it wasn't as, I would say, 
intensive and in, okay, we got quizzes, we have exams, we have all that sort of thing. Because at the end of the day, those three hours were done. We had talked about everything that we needed to get through. And I was emotionally drained rather than, you know, stressed out from the amount of stuff I have to memorize. So it was nice to be able to relax, go home, just chill for a while and know that I didn't have to worry about too much. I got my work done, I had some time to study, but I could really absorb what was going on. I really, that was one of the things that I just, I loved about this course. And as Jeff talked about that game, I actually ended up being one of the stars. And let's just say that was a fun experience. You get to know where everybody is. And in, we had a pretty large class, so you get to know some people, you make some uh, accomplices, I would say. To end off this course, our final was, of course, the presentation. And this was just really cool for me because you talk about things that happened in the past. And things, you know, they're always in the past. They're not happening right now. But this was our way of bringing it to the present. So we had to research um, modern conflicts that are going on and apply our learning to this conflict. And it was just, I had never thought about things like this before. And you can see, like, certain conflicts from so many different perspectives. You know, they're escalating or there's, you know, maybe been a lull or whatever's going on there. And you get to really research what people have already found and in a place where, you know, I wouldn't have expected this kind of thing to happen. So I really, I like that this final, it wasn't, you know, I got to go and I got to write 40 multiple choice, three long answers, and I got to do that. But I got to digest it, work through it over time, and present it to people who really wanted to know about it. So overall, with this course, my three-week experience, I would say it, it went pretty well. I... I learned a lot. I got out of my little bubble and I got to experience the world and see it through a whole new lens. And I wouldn't have had that experience without, you know, taking it in these three weeks, getting really intense with everything and um, getting to learn about what goes on. So it was, it was cool. <laughs> Thanks, Isabel. Great job. Thank you, Jeff. I hope these stories give all of you some sense of how the new calendar is creating exciting learning opportunities for Augustana students. I also wish we had time for many more examples. One of my favorites that I w would like to share with you was an environmental science course where the students and two faculty members moved out to our research station at Miquelon Lake Provincial Park for three weeks. The students each had a research project they were working on. They gathered data, some during the day, others at night, often both, assisting and critiquing one another's work, preparing meals, sleeping when they could, working incredibly hard, and having a grand time. When I visited there with Vice President Sharman and U of A President David Turpin, several of the students summarized their research for us, and I can't begin to tell you how impressed we were. Their poise, the clarity of their presentations, and the rigor of their three-week research projects were simply amazing. And I, for one, left thinking, there's no way I could have spoken to the president of the university so confidently back when I was an undergraduate. But not all the learning at a residential liberal arts campus happens through the curriculum. It also occurs more informally through extracurricular programs, interactions in the residence halls, and participation in student clubs and organizations. I'd like to introduce Randall Nickel to tell you just a bit about some of the innovations in his portfolio from the past year. Randall will also be introducing five amazing young women, the initial cohort who piloted our new residence option, residing together in a self-designed living and learning community. Thank you, Dean Berger. 
I'm excited to be here this evening to share briefly with you about a few of the many initiatives in student life at Augustana that I'm really excited about. And as Dean Berger already mentioned, most importantly, introducing you to five of our students that did some great things this year. The key purpose of my role is to support the creation of a great student experience. Our student services philosophy, borrowed from restorative justice principles, guides our work with students to support their experiences here in a residential liberal arts college. But it's not only about changes in behavior, it's a lot about growth. During my first experience with student orientation in the fall of 2016, I was struck that after three intensive days of activity and workshops, students and staff were exhausted. At the end of those three days, I wrote down that orientation felt disorienting. It was like drinking from a fire hose and I was holding the fire hose. I thought maybe it was only me feeling this way because it was my first time through it in this role. But after talking with others, I found that I wasn't alone. You've heard a bit about the first year seminar. This new initiative provided a great opportunity for us in student life to create a different orientation structure. I was welcomed to the planning committee for first year seminar and was able to interact and plan together with the academic side at Augustana, some great student life initiatives. We know that starting university is a huge academic and social transition. We believe that the last 60 days that students are at home before they come to university and the first 60 days that they are here are essential for their successful transition and for setting the stage for their graduation. In fall of 2017, we created an online orientation called Getting Ready For You, where we put a lot of the information that students could access before they arrive here instead of during those first three days. We also reframed the on-campus orientation, now called Arrive and Thrive, to focus on important conversations and meaningful interactions. During this orientation, we want to talk about important issues, have fun, and connect students in large and small groups while giving space for informal connections to occur. At the root of this approach is that orientation is a process rather than a specific event or a week. The culmination of the planning that we did together with the first year seminar committee was the creation of an orientation passport. It was a series of events or activities aimed at achieving the mission of our orientation program. These activities, which you can see listed up on the screen, include the opening convocation, which really is a celebration of the opening of the academic year, and for our first year students, their symbolic transition from high school. We invited Dr. Keith Edwards, who's an international speaker, to talk about relationships and the importance of consent. His focus is on preventing sexual violence. We held a blanket exercise through the Aboriginal Students Office, which is a participatory activity where students learn, learn more about Canadian history from an Indigenous perspective. The Barnga simulation is a card game where people play without any verbal communication. As the tournament progresses, they become aware that each table is playing by different rules. The orientation festival was a day where students could sign up for a range of experiences that build skills, connect them with others, and to learn something new. And finally, students were asked to write a reflection assignment to discuss their experience of social and academic adjustment to our campus. The passport clearly linked the student life and the academic life here at Augustana. What did students tell us about this experience? A lot. I've only put a few of them up on the screen for you. This fall, we will follow a very similar orientation plan and increase the student voices sharing their experiences with incoming students. In the next few years, we plan to think about what returning stu students need 
and how we can support their transitions as they move through university and get ready to leave. There have also been other significant changes within our student services. This year, we added a new student service called the Nurse Navigator. The Nurse Navigator, Sally Wilson, is a registered nurse connected to the Camrose Primary Care Network and located on our campus. Sally provides our campus with preventative health information and services, as well as direct support to students with health information and supported referrals to off and on campus supports. As Dean, Men Dean Berger mentioned earlier, we opened the new learning commons on the second floor of the library. Students can work collaboratively, they can attend and participate in campus rec activities, they can study together, and they can connect with a range of student services in one place. We found that our staff, working more closely together, felt more connected as a team supporting our students by being located in close proximity to each other. The many students using this space during exams now has us very excited for the future of the Learning Commons and the services that are connected to it. None of the services we provide would be possible without a great staff. I get to work dr directly with many of them. As the academic year comes to a close, we say goodbye to many students who work throughout the Student Life Department in a wide range of responsibilities, from kitchen staff to peer mentors and tutors, assistant chaplains, campus rec and athletics planning and support, community volunteers, student governance, and residence assistance, to name a few. I'm amazed every day at your skill and energy in balancing academic loads with other leadership activities. I'd also like to thank a few other student life staff who have left this year or plan to leave at the end of this year, including Paul Stone and Lowell Niven from Athletics, Brittany Johnson in the Aboriginal Students Office, and Nola Sharp in our counseling services. Their work has made a big difference to students and to their peers. In conclusion, I recently read an article called College as Practice for Life by James Lang. In the article, Lang describes the importance of the process of, quote, confronting difficult decisions, making choices, and growing, unquote for students in a residential context. A great example of this practice for life is in Augustana's first living learning community house, where five students lived and learned in that house situated on the edge of our property in what we call the land bank. These five students applied last year and were chosen from a group of applications and decided on how they were going to live together and how they were going to learn together. I understand now that this is the first new housing option in Augustana since 1986. Several of us recently joined these students for dinner at the house upon their invitation and heard and tasted how they have lived and learned this year. As the administrator, at least partially responsible for this project, I'm, take, I'm tempted to take some credit for its success. However, I'd like to invite the participants in this project to share their experience with us. When they are finished, you will know where the credit should go. Please welcome Mary Cairns, Alana Blachett, Jessica Logan, Betsy Sonia, and Candice Husalak to the stage. Thank you very much. Good evening. In an effort of fairness, we're all gonna stand on the stool to make everyone feel good about the height differences in the house. <laughs> my name is Mary, and these are my housemates, Candice, Alana, Bitsy Sonia, and Jess. And we were the first living learning community here at Augustana. We're gonna share some of our experiences and thoughts about the exper experience today. While we do so, there'll be a slideshow playing behind us that can give you a bit of a feel, um, a snapshot of what the highlights of our year were. 
Um, I'd like to start by explaining what our project was about. As Randall said, we got to choose and develop our own project, and it was called the Search for Balance, Search for Balance Wellness. And it was really about finding manageable ways to integrate wellness into your life. As students, it's very easy to have one thing, school, dominate every part of your life. We wanted to find little tidbits and tricks to integrate wellness and health into that life and create a more balanced existence. We did this by studying six different types, I shouldn't say studying, I'll say exploring, six different types of wellness, starting with mental wellness, physical wellness, and then emotional wellness. And then we moved forward into environmental wellness, social wellness, and spiritual wellness. And through exploring these different um, types of wellness throughout the year, we really learned a lot of different things. And if you have any questions after everyone has shared their thoughts, we'll be by our poster in the back during the reception. So please come and talk to us. It would be really, really great to share our experience in more detail. Thank you so much. I would like to talk on the aspect of integrative learning and the valuable impact of living together and learning together. Um, in a classroom setting, students, they go to class, they listen to the prof, they sit with their peers, and then they go home and um, take in the information, do their homework, and that's the end of that. Um, whereas in our case, we are living together, we see each other every single day, and we are learning and experiencing this project together. We are really able to see how each one of us takes in this information um, and the experiences we experience together and um, integrates it into their own lives, um, we really see the full value, uh, full potential of this project this way. Um, and with a project that means so much to every one of the girls, um, we are really able to see um, each one of their personal growth as well, our own personal growth, and most importantly, community growth as a home. The biggest takeaway from the Living Learning Community House for me has been learning about the power of diversity. I grew up in a small Northern Alberta community, and in that community, I grew up surrounded by people who were very similar to me, similar in values, in lifestyles, and in many other ways. So the Living Learning Community House has been a great place to experience diversity firsthand in a safe environment. The five of us are not only culturally diverse, but diverse in many other ways as well from things like hometowns, some of us grew up on farms while others in the big city, things like hobbies, goals and passions, and even areas of study from business to music to science. So this experience has taught me what diversity truly is and what it can do for a community. And overall, I learned not only is diversity okay, but it is essential and incredibly empowering. This was a very good way for me as an international student coming from Cameroon in West Central Africa to be able to integrate into the Canadian society. If someone told me I was going to be sharing a house with four Canadian girls when I was coming here to Canada, I was going to tell them, you're lying, like that's not going to happen. But it happened anyway. And sharing a house with the girls, I learned a lot which I believe if I were living on campus, I wouldn't have learned that much. It was an environment open to all ideas and making sure everybody was comfortable and uh, we were there for each other through the tough and happy moments. This experience in total, like everything I learned from the house, is one that is not only going to help me during my stay here in Canada, but also throughout my entire life. We started this year thinking that it would be fun. We were living in a really nice house. It was good, close to campus. We were gonna be moving in with some really good friends um, and we developed a project that we thought was interesting. The project went from interesting to absolutely fascinating and I learned more than I possibly could have imagined. We went from friends to a family. We started the year having house meetings once a week and ended it having family meetings that um, didn't really happen once a week because we were together all the time and the living learning house really became what can only accurately be called a living learning home 
the community that was created was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. We are so humbled and so incredibly grateful to everybody who worked to make this experience possible. Um, and we'll carry what we learned and, and what we've experienced this year with us for the rest of our lives. Thank you. They're simply uh, amazing. Thank you, Alana, Mary, Betsy, Sonia, Candace, and Jessica, and thanks, Randall. And I hope you can see why, as we look to the future, we hope to be able to create more environments for these kinds of living and learning communities. Before closing this evening, I need to acknowledge <coughs> that the past year was not just a year of accomplishment, it was also a year with difficult challenges. Chief among them, Augustana, like other faculties and units within the university, was asked to reduce its budget for the 2018-19 fiscal year, which just began three weeks ago, by 4%. With additional financial responsibilities that were allocated by central administration to the faculties, the challenge that Augustana faced was roughly 5%, or over $1 million. Now tonight's not an occasion to delve into the finances of the university, but it is important for me to let you know that we're facing this challenge creatively to the greatest extent possible collegially and with a determination to emerge on the far side because there are likely reductions next year and the following year also. Determined, as I said, to emerge on the far side, a resilient campus that still provides an excellent undergraduate experience that remains in touch with its core values and that is managing to preserve an impressive sense of community. There are two specific aspects to our budgetary decisions that I would like to briefly share with all of you. The first relates to our curriculum and to our faculty. Recognizing a need to reduce instructional costs for example, by eliminating low-enrolled courses, our academic staff are taking a challenging problem and turning it into an opportunity. Rather than simply removing classes or even majors from the curriculum, we're asking what we can do to strengthen our commitment to mission, to differentiate Augustana from the U of A's North Campus in Edmonton, and to make Augustana more attractive to students from ur urban areas and from out of province. These questions have led to the creation of the Curriculum Review Research Committee, whose acronym, because you always have to have an acronym, is pronounced CRIC. CRIC is just beginning to look at how we might strengthen our core program, making it more integrated and intentionally, a de an intentionally developmental experience for students. In this effort, the committee is looking at the first year seminars of, as a foundation that we can build upon. In addition, CRIC is asking how we might more evenly and efficiently distribute students across areas of study by rethinking major requirements, and in some instances, by designing exciting and unique interdisciplinary programs. I invite you to stay tuned. We're just getting started with this work. It will extend into our faculty workshop in early May, it will then be brought by members of CRIC for further elaboration and critique 
to a renowned curriculum reform workshop that's being held in boston in july and it will be the main topic of our faculty retreat in late august where it goes there after remains to be determined the second budgetary decision is one that many of you are aware of and some of you have responded to. And that's the decision to remove university funding for biathlon and cross country skiing. I acknowledge that these Nordic sports have been important to Augustana's history, to Camrose's history, to our identity and our culture but they have also suffered through declining rates of participation uh, and inadequate philanthropic support. Our tentative decision, pending negotiation with all the stakeholders, including current student athletes, the Camro Ski Club, alumni, and others, is to reorganize. My hope is that both sports will retain varsity status, but that we can implement a new governance and financial model, in some ways analogous to Augustana's chaplaincy program that invites stakeholders to join as full partners in ensuring the financial viability, the sustainability, and the quality of these programs. But we're in the early stages of conversation, so here too, I need to ask you to stay tuned. Actually, if you're passionate about these sports, I need to invite you to become involved. In closing tonight, the most important message I wish to communicate is thank you. All of us at Augustana are blessed by the support that this campus receives from the Camrose community, which you may recall from my report last year was ranked a couple of years ago the fifth most generous community in Alberta. We're also, of course, we also, of course, similarly benefit from the support of good friends throughout the surrounding region in the executive suites on North Campus of the University of Alberta and within the provincial government. Thank you all for coming this evening. Thank you for investing and believing in Augustana. I look forward to greeting, with, greeting you and talking more informally during our open house and soiree. Good evening. I would like to thank you all for joining us this evening. Please note that the LLC and other student presenters will be in the lobby to answer questions and engage in conversations with you. I would also like to thank the musicians who are here with us this evening. From Hong Kong, Hilda Lam is in her final year of study in the Bachelor of Music Vocal Performance degree program under Kathleen Corrick Crin and Harold Wines. Hilda has been the recipient of numerous scholarships and awards. Most notable is the Worth Institute for Austrian and Central European Studies Scholarship following a competitive audition to participate at a senior level in the performance of a leader program at the Franz Schubert Institute in Austria. In the fall of 2018, Hilda will begin graduate studies at the University of Western Ontario. Originally from Dos Dawson Creek, British Columbia, Angelique Ayerba is in her fourth and final year of studies at Augustana in the Bachelor of Music program under the tutelage of Dr. Milton Schlosser and Isa Ina Luzanak. Angelique teaches piano and level one keyboard explorers program for the Augustana Music Conservatory in Camrose. In the fall of 2018, she will continue her studies in Edmonton for an after degree in elementary education. Please join me in thanking them. Now, I would like to welcome the students who presented tonight to join me on stage. We would like to thank you for your time and for your effort at such a busy time of year.
before you enjoy the food in the lobby, which I know you're all looking forward to, um, I would like to point out the soir that the soiree has been awarded with gold certification from the Office of Sustainability. Green Spaces is an Office of Sustainability program that certifies events which have committed to the environment, economic, and social sustainability actions. The Spring Soiree has achieved gold certification, which is the highest level the office offers. One reason why we achieved this status was due to our innovative action of providing a campus garden plot as our door prize this evening. I have the ballots here, so I just need a volunteer from the front row to come and draw a name. <laughs> All right, the winner is Elizabeth Adel. I think I read that correctly. <laughs> Please come forward to the stage to receive your prize. As you leave the reception this evening, we'll be handing out copies of our annual report to the community. Being conscientious of our budgets and the environment, we ask that you only take one copy per household. We're also offering a variety of fair trade teas that are tagged to direct you in, into the online version of the report. Folks, we thank you for attending our spring soiree this evening, and I thank you for your attention and for the honor of being your MC this evening. Enjoy the rest of the night.